everyone, Sam here, your mother of Valkyries and host of the Sword and the Ribbon podcast. Sometimes we have so much going on that we feel overwhelmed and stressed. We can be irritable in physical pain and neglect our needs. But what happens when you start to feel this over a long period of time? This starts to become your everyday instead of feeling this every once in a while. When this happens, you're probably experiencing burnout in an area of your life. So what is burnout? How do we recognize it? And what can we do to recover from it? Let's find out together. This episode contains spoilers for the Throne of Glass series. If you want to avoid spoilers, I would recommend skipping this episode. So if you didn't know or missed it from episode 18, burnout is something I have struggled with in various forms over the past couple of years. It's also something that various Valkyries have talked about experiencing in the Discord server. So I wanted to dive more into it for them, myself, and all you listeners. Because the first step to addressing something is understanding and acknowledging it, right? The term burnout was coined by the psychologist Herbert Freudenberger in 1974. He defined burnout as a stress condition that can lead to physical, mental, and emotional exhaustion ranging in severity. Burnout is worse than what doctors consider average stress levels. It makes it challenging for people to cope with stress and handle day-to-day responsibilities. People experiencing burnout often feel like they have nothing left to give and may dread getting out of bed each morning. They may even adopt a pessimistic outlook toward life and feel hopeless. Burnout doesn't go away on its own, and if not acknowledged, it can impact other areas of your health physically and mentally. So who gets burnout? Everyone. At one point or another, everyone can experience burnout. Yes, even you too. Anyone who's continually exposed to high levels of stress can be at risk for burnout. Those who are in helping professions, like first responders, doctors, and nurses, are especially vulnerable to burnout. But along with career-induced burnout, people caring for children can also have this type of extreme exhaustion. A recent study even found that, just like doctors and business executives, mothers and fathers can also burn out. Those who have more of the stereotypical type A personality traits can also increase your risk of burnout. Some of your favorite characters even experience burnout. Alina from Shadow and Bone burns out literally and emotionally at the end of book two and takes most of the beginning of book three to recover. Viv from Legends and Lattes was so burnt out from fighting and going on quests, she had to change her whole life to make coffee to overcome it. During Inside Out 2, Riley experiences burnout when anxiety takes over and she keeps pushing herself so hard to be perfect. Even Aelin, Ash River, Whitethorn, Galathinius, Queen of Terrison experience burnout, literally. Aelin felt burnt out physically and emotionally. She experienced burnout when she was at the limit of using her power, and she felt burnt out in the end of the series after everything she went through and all the stress she was constantly under. Some of the strongest people we know in books and real life can experience burnout. It can impact every single one of us. Think you might be experiencing burnout, but are not exactly sure how to identify it? Here are six symptoms you can look for. Number one is exhaustion. Feeling physically and emotionally depleted can be a sign of burnout. You're so exhausted that you literally feel like you are burnt out. You might not have any energy or motivation to do things. Ever been so tired that you didn't want to do anything? That's the kind of exhaustion I'm talking about, but imagine feeling that every day. Some other physical symptoms you may experience include headaches, stomach aches, and appetite or sleeping changes. The second symptom is isolation. People with burnout tend to feel overwhelmed. This can cause them to sometimes stop socializing and confiding in friends, family members, and their inner circle. They start to feel so overwhelmed by everything and everyone that they pull away, choosing to isolate themselves to try and quench that fire. Number three, escape fantasies. Dissatisfied or living in so much stress with the never-ending demands of a job or kids or whatever else in their lives, people with burnout may fantasize about running away or going on a solo vacation. Have you ever been so stressed that you imagine packing up your life, moving somewhere else, and starting over? You might be having escape fantasies. The fourth symptom is irritability. Burnout can cause people to lose their shit with friends, family, and their inner circle more easily. It's when coping with the stress of everyday life becomes too much and you get really annoyed with the small things really easily. Like when you're prepping for a work meeting, driving the kids to school, or just trying to clean your house and nothing is going right. Everything after that seems to frustrate you really easily. But it's not just one day. 
With burnout, you can feel irritable every single day. Number five, frequent illnesses. Burnout, just like experiencing other long-term stress, can lower your immune system, making you more susceptible to colds, the flu, and insomnia. Burnout can also lead to mental health concerns like depression and anxiety. It goes back to the idea that you might be so exhausted that not only is your immune system lower, but you might not be taking care of yourself as well as you normally would, making it easier for you to get sick. And finally, symptom six, which is the lack of creativity. When you are exhausted, sick, tired, lonely, isolated, annoyed, and wishing you were somewhere else, it's no surprise that you might be lacking creativity. Burnout can feel all-consuming and overwhelming. When you're on fire, how could you expect to be creative? You're in fight-or-flight mode. You are solely focused on surviving and putting the fire out. Let's take a look at Aelin's symptoms of burnout. Whenever Aelin expels a lot of her power reaching the bottom of her well, she becomes totally and completely exhausted. In Air of Fire, when she physically burns out the first time, it says, She was almost asleep again, teeth still chattering, when her window ground open in the breeze. She was too cold and sore to get up. There was a flutter of wings and a flash of light. Before she could roll over, he'd scooped her up, blanket and all. If she'd had any energy, she might have objected. Aelin was so physically exhausted, she was sore and couldn't even get up to close her window. She didn't even have the energy to complain when he carried her to sleep in his own bed. Aelin also had other physical symptoms of burnout in Air of Fire. She also says... I highly doubt anyone is going to attack me now, if they've already put up with my nonsense for this long. Rowan didn't even look up from his seat at his work table. This isn't negotiable. She might have laughed, had her body not given a burst of twisting, blinding pain. She bore down on it, clenching her mug, focusing on her breathing. That was why she'd allowed him to fuss. Thanks to her magical meltdown last night, every damn part of her was sore. The constant throb and stinging and twisting, the headache between her brows, the fuzziness on the edge of her vision, even sliding her gaze across the room sent sparks of pain through her head. Aelin was in physical pain and had to take time to allow her body to recover from the burnout. And while your body might not need to recover from using magic, it still will need to physically recover from the toll of experiencing burnout can take on your own body. Aelin also experienced irritability in her burnout which Rowan noticed in Air of Fire when it says, He looked her over with the same scrutiny. Skin, wan and gleaming from the remnants of those hot flashes. Lips pale and cracked. Posture limp and useless. Eyes pain-dimmed and increasingly full of irritation. I would also say that as the stress of the word keys in Air One started to press on her, she started to be a little bit more irritable, things becoming more quick to annoy her than before. Could part of that just be her personality? Maybe, but we can debate that later. As Aelin's story moved through Empire of Storms and Kingdom of Ash, she became more withdrawn into herself. Yes, she was probably experiencing some PTSD, especially at the beginning of Kingdom of Ash, but the more Aelin was stressed and had to plan what was going to happen to close the word gate, the more she withdrew from others. Aelin experienced a lot of the symptoms for burnout, but they didn't happen all at once it's actually progressional to experience burnout. Unlike a cold or the flu, burnout doesn't hit all at once. Our good friend psychologist Herbert Freudenberger outlined the 12 phases of burnout. And while these are 12 phases, they don't always occur in the same order for each of us. So while I tell you one order of the phases, you may be thinking that your order actually goes six, nine, 10, three, you get the idea. To start off, phase one is excessive drive and ambition. This is common for people starting a new job or starting a new project. Too much ambition can lead to burnout because they think they can do all the things at once, causing them to become exhausted real quick and feel a lot of those other symptoms. Phase two is when someone starts pushing themselves to work harder. Pushing yourself beyond your normal can cause burnout. It all comes back to the idea that you are running at a pace that you cannot keep up with and forcing yourself to keep running even when you're exhausted. Like the flash, you're going to run so fast and long you catch fire, and once you stop, you'll feel that burnout. Phase three is neglecting your own needs. You begin to sacrifice things like sleep, exercise, self-care, and eating well. When you do this, you become more irritable and even lower your immune system. 
When you neglect your own needs, it can be because you're so focused on the flames, you don't realize that you're not taking care of yourself. You're so focused on the fire burning out that you forget you have needs too. Phase four is the displacement of conflict. What that means is that you put the blame for your feelings on someone else instead of yourself. So instead of acknowledging that you're pushing yourself to the max, you blame your mate, the demands of your job, or inner circle for your troubles. When in reality, it's not their fault at all. But you are so caught up in pushing yourself forward when you desperately need rest that you can't see the effects you have on yourself. Phase five is no time for non-work related needs. It also doesn't have to be work, but it could be whatever goal you are striving for. Maybe you have specific running goals for a marathon and you decide you don't have any time to spend with your inner circle anymore because all your time has to be spent on training. Your values become revised. The thing you're working toward becomes your sole focus at the expense of your family, friends, and hobbies, which now seem irrelevant. You can try and deny it all you want, but I promise you that phase six really is denial. It's here when impatience with those around you really builds and instead of taking responsibility for your actions, you blame others. You might even start seeing them as incompetent, lazy, and overbearing. When in reality, you are in denial of the burnout you are experiencing, subconsciously thinking it's easier to blame others instead of dealing with what's going on in yourself. Phase seven is withdrawal. You begin to withdraw from your inner circle. Invitations to be social or to attend a dinner with friends, a birthday party, or even going out to do something simple like going to the movies starts to feel really hard instead of like something you would enjoy. You pull away from the things in your life that would usually make you happy in an effort to try and keep to yourself. Phase eight is when your behavior changes. Those on the road to burnout may become more aggressive and snap at loved ones for no reason. You start to act not like yourself because you're not yourself. You're living as the burnt out version of yourself. Phase nine is depersonalization. This is when you start to feel detached from your life and your ability to control your life. It's what you revel as a sense of disconnection from your thoughts, emotions, sensations, or action. You may even start to feel like you're observing yourself from an external perspective, not your own. Phase 10 is experiencing inner emptiness or anxiety. Feeling empty or anxious are things no one enjoys feeling. And to eliminate those, some people try to cope with their emotions by any way they can. Sometimes this can look like avoiding those feelings by turning to things to distract you from those feelings, like binge watching a TV show or reading multiple books nonstop. And in extreme cases, some people may even turn to substance abuse, gambling, or overeating. Phase 11 is depression. This is when you have thought of life losing its meaning and you begin to feel hopeless. Depression can have similar symptoms to burnout, but the cause of them makes them fundamentally different. In this case, depression has become a phase or symptom of burnout. And last but not least, phase 12 is mental or physical collapse. When you're at the end of the line and you just can't seem to find a way forward, there might not be anything left you can do for your burnout but collapse. You might experience all or just some of these if you are experiencing burnout. Even Aelin went through most of these at some point in the series. Rowan was so aware of what was happening to her, even if she didn't understand that. In Air of Fire, he says, If you'd gone on any longer, the burnout would have destroyed you. You must learn to recognize the signs and how to pull back before it's too late. It will rip you apart inside. If Aelin has to learn what her symptoms and phases are for recognizing burnout, you do too. You have to do it to protect yourself, to make sure you stay the best version of yourself. And if nothing else, do it for Rowan. Now that we all understand what burnout looks like, how do we identify when it comes to fitness? For many of us, burnout and fitness looks like doing too much. It's when we go in hard, hit the ground running, and try to do everything all at once. Like in Valkyrie Squad or Electro Kickboxing, you might start off day one thinking it's easy, and so you do a bunch of days all at once. Or maybe you do a workout plus every single side quest that's listed, not taking rests. You decide that you want to skip rest days or choose not to take a break when your body needs it. You might feel an urgency to complete the program. It might be because you believe that if you take a day off, you will never come back and finish the program. The problem with all these things is that they can lead to exhaustion, making workouts feel like a chore, 
possible injuries, and ultimately will cause you to burn out just as fast as you started. Even as a trainer, I can experience burnout. When I try to force myself to do, create, and teach things without taking the time to rest, it's easy to experience burnout. I start to feel unmotivated to teach, a lack of creativity for my classes, a lack of inspiration to do something new, and I can get easily irritated by everyone. No matter how you experience fitness burnout, taking a step back to recognize what's going on and address it will help you avoid it in the future. Now that I've talked for the length of Kingdom of Ash about what burnout is, maybe you're thinking, I'm not currently experiencing burnout, but I sure as fuck don't ever want to. While stress may be unavoidable, burnout is preventable. I want to give you five tangible tips that you can do to help keep yourself from burnout. So number one is to exercise. Not only is exercise good for our physical health, but it can also give us an emotional boost. You don't need to spend hours at the gym to reap those benefits. Mini workouts and short walks will help keep the burnout away. When you're exercising, make sure you are taking it slow and pacing out your workouts. Shift your mindset and remind yourself that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. If you need ideas for short workouts, try the Micro Squad's Spicy Quick Quest. It's a month-long calendar of mini classes about 10 to 15 minutes long that are short but still impactful. You can also try the Magic Mobility Program. It will help you slow down and keep moving while working on mobility instead of pushing yourself to drip sweat. The second tip is to eat healthy foods. Eating a healthy diet filled with omega-3 fatty acids can be a natural antidepressant. Adding foods rich in omega-3s like flaxseed oil, walnuts, and fish may help give your mood a boost. If you want more info and tips on eating healthy and having a better relationship with food, listen to registered dietitian and Valkyrie Morgan's episodes called The Sword and the Dietitian, parts 1, 2, and 3. And speaking of eating healthy, try eating seasonal foods with healthy, balanced recipes from the Summer Court and Akatar Eats. Ever wonder what the Valkyries eat when training in the Summer Court? Tarquin gave us his cook's recipe book. Discover the delights of seasonal cuisine with the Summer Court Seasonal Cookbook by Akatar Eats. Embrace the nutritious and cost-effective benefits of eating with nature's calendar. With almost 30 new recipes for every occasion, and Akatar themed, this will be your go-to guide for the summer. Every recipe is swap-friendly for vegetarian and other dietary concerns. Check out the Akatar Eats Instagram page at Akatar Eats to purchase and for more information. Tip three and a Valkyrie favorite is mind stilling. If you're new here, mind stilling is a daily practice where you sit in a quiet place, quiet your mind, and focus on your breathing. If you'd like to know more about mind stilling, listen to episodes two and four. And find 20 plus mind stillings in the Valkyrie Squad program or listen to any of our bonus pocket stilling episodes, aka the mini mind stillings. Want recommendations for mind stillings related to burnout? Try the full length summer court mind stilling in the Valkyrie Squad program. You can also try the mini pocket stilling bonus episode seven. Tip four is to practice good sleep habits. Our bodies need time to rest and reset, which is why good sleep habits are so important. According to the National Sleep Foundation, avoiding caffeine before bedtime, establishing a relaxing bedtime routine, and not using your phone before bed can help build better sleep habits. Lastly, tip five is to reach out your hand and ask for help. During stressful times, it's important to reach out your hand. If asking for help is too hard, Consider creating a self-care check-in with your inner circle so that you can take care of each other during trying times. Did our fire-breathing bitch Queen Aelin do any of these for herself? Nope. She did nothing to help herself. Aelin being Aelin, always putting others before herself. Don't be like Aelin. We love her, but don't channel this part of her. So whenever you start to feel those symptoms of burnout or think you are at risk for burnout, Make sure you follow these five tips to keep yourself rested, not overwhelmed, and away from burnout. Now, what if you're not the one experiencing burnout, but you're watching someone else in your inner circle go through it? While you can't take away their stress, offering support can help. So here are a few ways you can help them. One of the ways we do this in our Discord communities is the idea of asking someone if they want the sword or the blanket. This is a way to ask someone if they want comfort or solutions. 
Not everyone may need or want advice when they are going through something. It's a way to make sure you consider what someone needs in the present moment without rushing to offer them solutions. Holding a space for someone can be more effective than swinging a sword at everything. And sometimes people need the sword to defend and help. Some people are actively trying to find help and get resources, and they need the sword in those moments for you to help them find resources. Asking someone if they would prefer the sword or the blanket is important and a good first step to trying to help them. Another way you can support someone experiencing burnout is to validate their feelings and concerns. When someone you care about is feeling the effects of burnout, saying, it doesn't sound that bad or I'm sure things will get better, while you mean those things to offer support, they can feel invalidating to someone who's struggling. Instead, offer validation for their feelings by saying, you've been working so hard, I can understand why you feel exhausted. Offering specific types of help can be really helpful when someone is feeling overwhelmed. Those experiencing burnout are often too tired to think of ways that you can help them. So instead of asking, how can I help? Offer to bring them food, run errands for them, watch their kids, or maybe even just do a load of laundry. Kind gestures go a long way with offering to help. Sometimes your people just need to know you're thinking of them and that you care. Sending flowers, a meaningful text, or a written card doesn't take much effort, but can remind your friend that they are not alone. People with burnout can feel lonely and underappreciated, but small gestures of kindness can be reassuring and make all the difference. If you ask and your friend tells you why they would like the sword, researching and looking for tools to help them can be a way to ease their stress. Maybe it's looking up childcare, a house cleaner, or a therapist. Maybe it's helping them take some things off their plate. Whatever resources they need, you taking the time to look for them can relieve some stress and anxiety because they know they don't have to take the time to do it for themselves. No matter who is experiencing burnout, someone in your inner circle, or even yourself, it's important to remember that recovery does not have a set timeline. Everyone's situation is different, so it will look different for each one of us to recover from the burnout. You might need to rest and recover for a week after working out every single day for a month. You might need to slow your pace at work so that you can take a breath from work and readjust your pace. You might even need to take a hard stop, stopping everything and reevaluating how to keep going without burning out. Take an ice cold bath might be the shock you need to your system just like Aylin. But no matter how you need to change your life to recover from burnout, there is no time limit or expectations for how long it will be. Choose to do what it takes to recover from burnout to whatever end. This week's piece of Cauldron Blessed Wisdom is when you are feeling overwhelmed or stressed or on the edge of burnout, to pause and ask yourself, are the things you're worrying about really that important? If you really took the time to evaluate what was going on, half of the time we worry about things that really don't matter all that much in life. When we're in the midst of all these feelings, focusing on the small moments can help remind us that burnout doesn't have to be all-consuming. Just because you are feeling overwhelmed doesn't mean that you can't have meaningful moments. Look for the small things, take the break, and create one of those moments for yourself. In the moments where you feel like Aelin in Air of Fire and think to yourself, I am lost, she whispered onto the earth, and I do not know the way. Remember that you are a Valkyrie and you will not be afraid. Your action item this week is to remember when you feel like you are burning to stop, drop, and roll. First, you stop. Stop, take a breath, and look at yourself in the mirror, not just physically, but the one inside you. Look internally and acknowledge those pieces of yourself that you may feel like are burning. Remind yourself that you are worth fighting for. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, live, Valkyrie, live. Next, you drop. Take a step back from everything going on around you and reevaluate what you are actually holding on to. It's okay to choose to let things go. Just drop them. You take things off your plate and not have to worry about them anymore. Lastly, you roll. Roll out the door and do something fun for yourself, where there's no expectations to do anything but enjoy the small moments. Maybe you get dressed up, feeling gorgeous and spend time with a friend you haven't seen in a while. Pick up a side project that has nothing to do with anything, but something you enjoy like crafting, sewing, baking, or anything else that creates a small moment of happiness. Decide to learn something new, 
not because you have to, but just because you want to. Learn to braid your hair, do your makeup, make homemade pasta, or take up tattooing. Do something so that you can feel like you accomplished something today and create a small moment where you didn't feel the burn from burnout. No matter what you decide to do, you can always remind yourself to be strong, kick ass, and be fucking magical every day. This episode was produced by writer Bex Castro and audio engineer Carolyn McMorrin. Special thank you to Taylor Ash for creating the music of this podcast. And thanks for listening to The Sword and the Ribbon by The Micro Squad. If you're interested in learning more about The Valkyrie Squad, visit us at thevalkyriesquad.com. If you're interested in learning more about The Micro Squad or Geek Gym for a class, visit us at themicrosquad.com. Make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you get your podcasts from so you don't miss out. And if you like this week's episode, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts.